Well, hello, Mitchell Breen, and welcome to our Fall 2020 Growth Campaign. This year, the theme is Be a Disciple. We're going to be looking at the second part of our mission statement, which is to see people grow. And so we're looking at uh, discipleship as a key for the next year. Uh, our vision for discipleship as a church is represented by four chairs. They, the, each chair represents a call of Jesus into a different level of following him. And so the first chair is represented by Jesus' call to come and see. Come and see what's going on. Jesus said that to people in his day. The second chair is represented by the second call of Jesus, which is to come and follow me. So moving from the place of coming to check Jesus out to a place of actually following him. The third chair is then represented by the call of Jesus to come and I'll teach you to fish for men. Jesus said, come and serve with me. Let's do ministry together. Let's serve people together. Learn how to do that. And then the fourth chair is represented by the call of Jesus to go and make disciples, to be reproducing in our uh, ourselves in the lives of others. And so that's going to be our overview as we look at this series this fall, which we're going to be asking two key, key questions. Which chair are you in and which chair do you need to move towards? That's what I want you to be thinking out through this whole fall campaign. Well, um, in our life group lessons, we're going to be studying uh, from Matthew chapter 5, which is uh, the first sermon, the first recorded sermon of Jesus, where he teaches the people that were gathered around him, there were crowds that were following him, and he teaches them some very important, simple principles about life. Jesus did an amazing thing. He brought God, who was uh, seen by the Jewish people as um, high and lofty, represented by the Ju Jewish religion, which was full of laws and rules that many of them could not keep. And Jesus brought it down to principles that people could understand. He made God accessible. And so these attitudes, or the, this passage, this first sermon, is known as the Beatitudes, this is the first sermon of Jesus. And so this first week, we're looking at the, uh, the, this key principle or this attitude that Jesus teaches is that you need God. You need God. Jesus says in this passage, which we'll read in a minute, that if you know you need God, then you're going to find him. And so he teaches us that in, as we walk through life, we need to have this attitude. The word beatitude is actually from the Latin word for blessings. And so these blessings are Jesus teaching about the kinds of people who will be blessed by God in this life. The question we're asking again in this study is, do you have the attitudes necessary to receive the blessings of God in your life? Do you have the attitudes needed to receive what you need from God? Blessings in the Bible refer to those who will be happy, are fortunate, and who will be congratulated because of God's response to the way they handle their situation. The first attitude we will be looking at in this study is spiritual poverty. When I grew up as a kid, my father was in seminary and my mom was raising four kids. My dad worked part-time and we lived on a thin line. We always had enough, but that enough included government cheese, Cutting milk with powdered milk to make it go further. Things like that. Growing up poor actually gave me a strong motivation to work. I got offered a paper route at the age of 10, and I worked that paper route for three years. The, the job gave me the ability to buy baseball cards and other fun things that I wanted, but my parents couldn't afford. See, being poor made me aware of my need, and it put me in a position to respond to the offer of a job and that job would provide for things that I wanted. As a kid, I, of course, felt I needed those things. Well, this week, we're looking at that first attitude that puts us in a position to be blessed by God. The first attitude that puts us into that position to receive God's blessings is to recognize that we need Him. Do you know that you need God? Do you realize that you're spiritually poor? 
If you don't realize that, then you won't be ready to respond when you're presented the opportunity to receive forgiveness and grace from God. Our verse this week is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. It says this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is teaching the people that are around him that people, the people that will be happy or fortunate in their lives are the people who recognize that they're spiritually poor, that they need God each and every day of their life. Stop and think back for a minute to the time in your life when you realized you were in spiritual need and you sought help from God. For many of us, this is the story of our testimony, the story of when we became a Christian. For me, that story has several moments of decision in it. It starts, though, when I was five years old. As a five-year-old, my parents took me to vacation Bible school, and it was a small church in a small town in Montana. My teacher was Sharon Whitworth. She was teaching my class. She taught us the gospel using John 3.16, which says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. In that moment, I recognized my spiritually poor situation, and I responded by placing my trust in what Jesus had done for me on the cross. As I grew older, I lived for Jesus. I grew in obedience to him until I hit junior high. As I entered the teenage years, I began to struggle to stay consistent at following Jesus. I felt the pressure to go along with what other kids were doing. It wasn't until I went to Bible college at 18 and got out of my parents' home and I got out on my own that I once again recognized my need for God. I made a strong commitment to follow him for the rest of my life. How about you? Do you live your life in such a way that you have a sense of your need for God? Are you spiritually poor? Can you see that you need God and what he has to offer? Pride hurts habits, hang-ups, all can keep us from recognizing we need God and moving towards Him. What reminds you in your life that you need God each and every day? Come to God each day with your hands out. Hold your hands out as you pray together this week as a group. Share things that you know you need from God. We are told that God wants to care for us and meet the deepest needs of our hearts. When I lived in Atlanta, I worked among many homeless people. One of the things I noticed about them is when you'd walk by them on the street, they'd hold their hands out. They knew that they needed help. In Acts chapter 3, the Apostle Peter and the Apostle John are on their way to the temple and they encounter a lame beggar. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon, about 3 o'clock, for a prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called Beautiful Gate, so he could beg from the people going to the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them and eagerly because he was expecting some money. Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went to the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's calling aid, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. As you go throughout your week this week and you spend time in prayer with God, I want to ask you to do a simple thing. Physically hold your hands out like this. Represent before God as you pray that you're needy. Remember to stay needy before God. The Bible tells us that God wants to meet our needs. As we walk through this life with Jesus, we need to stay dependent on him. Though he wants to teach us to become independent in some ways, to walk uh, on our own two feet, to know what to do in this life, 
we have to continue to stay needy before him. Do you have an attitude where you know you need God? The truth is that you do. We all need God. Jesus said, when you know you need God, the kingdom of heaven is going to be yours. I want to encourage you this week, as you go throughout your week, stay dependent on God. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your call on us to follow you and to walk with you. We want to grow in our relationship with you. We want to be disciples who are moving and growing as we go through this life. Father, help us this week as we walk with you, as we spend time with you, as we pray to stay needy, to remember that we need you. Thank you for being willing to meet our spiritual needs and every need that we have. We truly need you in each and every way. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I encourage you as you walk throughout this week, don't forget to stay needy, and we'll see you next week for the next lesson. God bless. 